OpenAI just launched ChatGPT agent that can control your entire computer. The catch is it's not your own computer. It's a computer that is sitting inside some container. But the best part is this can do task for you. There are three questions that might be on top of your mind. I just want to give it out soon. First question, is it a new model? Is it GPT-5? No, it's not GPT-5. OpenAI doesn't advertise it as GPT-5. If you have used GenSpark, if you have used Manus, then this is very similar like that. Number two. When will I get access to it? If you're a pro subscriber, if you're a plus subscriber, OpenAI says that you will get access it, you will get access for it today. I've not gotten access until now, but they've promised that you will get access, except if you are in Europe. But if you're a free user, then you might have to wait for a very long time. The third question is, is it groundbreaking? Is it like something magical? No, it's not. It is something like Manus or GenSpark or even uh, like one level below Comet, Perplexity Comet, because it's not a dedicated browser. It is all happening inside OpenAI's ChatGPT interface. So there are like certain things that you can do, certain things that you can't do, but it is definitely a productivity killer. So you can use it, automate a lot of tasks. A lot of people might even lose their jobs with this if companies start implementing it, if they are not worried about giving access to OpenAI's data. Watching the agent sort of use the internet, make these spreadsheets, make PowerPoints, whatever else, uh, and do all this work is, is quite amazing. We're going live today for Pro Plus and team users. Pro users will get uh, 400 queries a month, plus some team users will get 40 a month. Uh, the rollout should be finished by the end of the day for Pro and very soon for plus and team users. We'll try to be live for Enterprise and EDU by the end of this month. As Casey mentioned, although this is an extremely exciting new technology, there are new risks. Uh, people learned how to use the internet generally pretty safely, uh, although of course there are still scammers and other attacks. People are going to need to learn to use AI agents, uh, and society is going to need to learn to build up defenses against attacks on AI agents as well. So we're starting with a very robust system, lots of warnings. We will relax that over time as people get more comfortable with it. But we do want people to treat this as a new technology and a new risk surface and use all of the caution that Casey talked about. Having said that, in this video, I'm going to break it down for you what this new tool is, how this new tool is performing across different benchmarks. To start with, The Verge has got an insider access and one interesting aspect here is that it says one employee uses it to automate his weekly parking request at OpenAI's San Francisco office. Now, this might sound magical, but this is something that people have been doing for a very long time using something called RPA. RPA stands for robotic process automation. This is like the sort of UI path companies were doing already. Instead of outsourcing it to a BPO, you would try to automate as much as possible. And again, like I'm not trying to underplay what OpenAI has built here, but I'm just trying to say that this is not a radical or groundbreaking. What is ChatGPT agent? ChatGPT agent is a combination of three different things that OpenAI already had. So there is a model like O3, which has been trained to be an agent. Then second, it has got access to two different systems. One is a textual browser like Deep Research. The second one is a visual browser like Operator. So it can handle like uh, the most clicks and all those things. So combining these three, a model, a textual browser like Deep Research and a visual browser like Operator, OpenAI has created this OpenAI agent, which is ChatGPT agent that they call it, which is ideally supposed to do any sort of automation that you want because this agent mode has got access to a bunch of tools. First of all, it is inside a VM virtual machine. So it's got its own set of tools like terminal, like, you know, you want to do something with bash. It's got its own file system, but also you can give access to external tools. Like for example, you have got your Google drive, you've got your SharePoint, you wanted to manipulate spreadsheet, you wanted to make PowerPoint. So it can do all sorts of things. So everything that you would typically do on a computer, it can do for you, but not just your local computer. OpenAI has been like saying extensively that you should be very careful when you're using it. But I think this is something that they've been always telling us to be cautious. There are a lot of interesting benchmarks, but one benchmark that caught my eye is something that they call as a spreadsheet bench. I think this is a very interesting and important benchmark because a lot of big companies like Fortune 500 companies have got a uh, one tool that is ubiquitous that is spreadsheet whether it is google spreadsheet microsoft excel LibreOffice, this is something that people use across industries across companies and on, on, on this particular benchmark human has scored 71.3 percent and openai's latest model with file access with the actual xlsx file the actual spreadsheet file it has scored 45 percent i would say it's quite an impressive thing 
because a lot of people's daily job is to open a spreadsheet, enter something, do some kind of calculation, write some kind of formula, close it, save it, make chart, do automation. This is this is exactly what a lot of people I personally know have been doing for the last five to 10 years. And this model comes along or this tool comes along and then says, hey, I can do 45% of that thing. I mean, forget about 45%, even if 35%, I'm kind of automation that you can do, the kind of manpower that you can save, <laughs> number of people that companies would be willing to fire would be ginormous, ginormous, would be ginormous. And this is this is a very good benchmark. One thing that OpenAI has cleverly done across all the benchmark is they've not compared it with any third party. Like most of the cases, they've not compared it with any third party tool like Manus or GenSpark. They've been comparing it with their previous model, which is kind of absurd because those are not agentic models. They never had access to tools and browsers. I mean, it's quite obvious, right? You take a kid and ask the kid to answer 10 questions. Then you take the same kid and tell the kid, I'm going to give you Google Chrome and I'm going to give you Google access. And then you can answer it using that. It is obviously going to do better. I mean, it's not just LLMs. Like humans can also do better. The good thing about this particular tool is that this tool is not just like an instant answering tool. This tool can also take number of like many hours to answer. I think that is another big win for this particular tool. So unlike any existing tool that just tries to do things like in 10 minutes and 15 minutes, even deep research, like 30 minutes thinking, this tool can take hours, one to two hours, three to four hours, four to six hours, seven plus hours, even 10 plus hours. So this is one particular tool that is designed to operate for a large number of hours it also shows why they can take like huge amount of tasks and why big enterprise companies might want to use it. Sam Altman wants to call it feel the AGA. I would say this is nothing called AGA. This is age old automation that has been happening in enterprises for ages. And here OpenAI is on the money because companies will pay for it and then start using it. Another very interesting benchmark is something that they call investment banking modeling task. This is again a very high ticket item. Companies pay a lot of money to do these kind of modeling tasks. Financial modeling teams are there in a lot of different companies, whether it is staff planning, whether it is like the next year uh, financial model that they have to plan. So this model, when you prompt this model to do such task, this model has scored 41% out of the task. And in fact, what is much better is that if you take this model and then do the same task 64 times and then pick the best. So on an average, it scores 41%. But when you pick the best, it scores 71% out of 64 instances. I think this is excellent. And uh, this is quite timely because Anthropic just launched Claude for finance. And it seems like OpenAI also realized that if I want more money, I just not, I just should not put software engineers out of job, but also I should put investment bankers out of job because they have a lot of money and Wall Street will definitely pay for a tool like this because all their tools are like super expensive and this is nothing for them. Ultimately, you can either dismiss that this is a simple turnkey solution that OpenAI has built using existing tools, or you can be in awe to say that, okay, I didn't know that this was possible. And today this is possible. And a lot of tasks in my company can be automated using this particular tool. Either way, this is an impressive launch from OpenAI, nothing groundbreaking, nothing AGI, nothing GPT-5, but simply something that can provide a productivity killer for a lot of people on boring mundane tasks. But if you are one of those people in that boring mundane task, then you should start making good career choices at this particular point because you don't want to be fired by a tool. Obviously, companies will take time to sign this data privacy agreement with OpenAI before they can fire people. This tool is another testament to say that AI is coming for your jobs, my job, everybody's job. And if you are not going to be fired, at least better use the tool and then stay in the job. Let me know what you think about this model. See you in another video. Happy prompting.